So hi, I'm Wendy Rees. I'm a Director of Operations and formerly a community nurse. I work with Southern Health NHS Foundation Trust. The last couple of years, I've been working with the National Demand and Capacity Team on a community model to help frontline teams understand their clinical capacity required to meet the demands of their service. Over the last nine months, we've managed to get around 200 teams in this organisation involved in a really exciting and simple demand and capacity modelling exercise, which has made a real difference to patients and staff. Uh, my name is Craig Rees, I'm the Social Director for the Business and Performance Team for Southern Health. The senior team, the Governors and Exec Board, um, tasked the performance team to see if we could do a review of the demand coming through each and every single clinical service and our capacity to meet that demand, and I lead that programme. When the board asked us to do this, the first thing we did is we worked with the National Demand and Capacity Team and then we, we put together a simple program that allows us to have a look at the information coming through the patient caseload and the ability for the staff to meet that caseload in terms of their workforce. Um, and each and every single team, we work and engage with them and ask them to do a simple review and look for efficiencies within the services. And they share that detail with us just over a coffee, just for an hour, engaging with the team. And then we look to see if we can't support them in changing those efficiencies. And often there's systems in place within the trust that people just perhaps aren't familiar with or have, don't feel as if they've been given permission to try yet. So we encourage them to do that, just with a weekly drop-in session where they can come and bring their challenges and we can support them with it. So this model is owned by the teams. They produce it, they can control the outputs from the model, they can communicate to whoever they want to, what it tells them. And actually it feels to them as if it's not a bureaucratic expectation, it's not top down at all, it's completely owned by them. And in this trust, the approach we've taken is that it's an exercise that they can do if they want to. It's not an expectation. If they want to get involved, that's great. If they don't, that's okay as well. And actually that has encouraged people to take part. Rather than feeling they have to do it, they actually want to do it. Specifically, we've enabled the community teams, particularly in the southwest, who have led the charge on this. They've looked at uh, some of the detail that we have to provide for our electronic patient record. And there's a lot of information in there, and we've supported them to shorten that information and go for the essential information only, which has reduced their clinical administrative time by 30 minutes per patient. Imagine all the hundreds and thousands of patients we get through the services, released an awful lot of clinical time. My name's uh, Clive Redgrove. I work in service development for Southern Health in the southwest of Southern Health. And colleagues Wendy and Craig were really helpful at the beginning for, for me to get an understanding of how the models might look, might work. Um, that's something I, I, I kind of struggled with a little bit at the beginning because, as I said, I work in a very kind of a complex environment, acute environment, busy environment. It was difficult to see how how the models uh, might fit all the all the nuances, all the all the differences. But it was a really helpful start with Wendy and Craig, and, and with colleagues in the crisis team group started on that journey and already starting to see some benefits. The, the demands on the NHS are ever increasing. The demands on services like the crisis team are. are, are ever increasing they're not going away and I think it's more important that we really look carefully at what we do how we spend our time how we prioritize our time and this is a really good tool to be able to do that. So some teams have been able to do the exercise and realize there is capacity that they can create by just changing maybe the time of a handover or the length of time that they do in MDT meetings so some teams have actually created more capacity and are able to see more patients some teams have identified that actually their demand and their capacity is such in a mismatch that actually it's very difficult to deliver the service. And actually they've been able to build a case for change and actually come to managers like me and say, actually, I think we need to do something different. And some teams have just really enjoyed the exercise. It's been a good team building event. They've been able to learn from each other. They've been able to share how they see patients or how they maybe run their service with others. And that's made small improvements as well. So I'm Susan Daniel and I am the clinical lead for the Totten and Waterside therapy team. 
I manage a team of 13, so that's physiotherapists, occupational therapists and senior rehab instructors as well as rehabilitational assistants. Um, so I manage the day-to-day -day running of the team um, as well as carry a clinical caseload. So my journey started last year when I had noticed a significant demand on our team. So our referral rates increased by about 54% in the last three years. Um, just specifically for our team in Tottenham Waterside. So that was the main driving point for me, was to try to analyse the demand and also whether or not our capacity would actually meet that. We've also been looking uh, individually, collectively as a team. So we've uh, sat down and really thought about what it is that we're doing, what it is that we could uh, save on, what are our efficiencies, but also what's our wastage. Uh, and that's uh, brought about some really good discussion in the team, so things like how we document, how we uh, place patients on the waiting list. So lots of quality improvement projects have been on the go to try to make us more efficient. Um, and again, the capacity hasn't changed in the team, um, but it's just how we are adapting to manage that demand. So I'm Matthew O'Reilly, a member of the NHS England National Demand and Capacity Programme team. Wendy and I uh, both approached the modelling work with a view that historically it's been seen that modelling for community services is too difficult, too complex, whereas actually the approach we've tried to take has been that it is possible. Um, it needs a, a slightly different approach to modelling acute services or uh, secondary care services due to the nature of the way a lot of the teams work and the variances between teams but with the right approach it is possible and uh, the story that uh, we've heard from, from Southern Health is, is really exciting and a really really positive story about how modelling can work and does work um, and has been developed at scale across a significant number of teams. So I'm David Batchelor, Senior Operations Manager working across South West Hampshire for Southern Health. The Capacity and Demand Light Tool presented us with a real opportunity to uh, discuss as, as a team where the inefficiencies lied um, to enable us to increase patient pacing time as much as possible. And what that's resulted in is a real improvement in staff morale but also patient experience and, and safety, specifically in terms of our urgent community response times. So for anyone else that's considering using the Capacity and Demand Light tool, I'd really encourage them to throw themselves um, into it, generate those discussions, um, don't fear the tool. Uh, it, it can look quite daunting at first, but there is no need for it to be data heavy. Um, the majority of the value that we took from this, um, this tool was in those facilitated discussions that we've had with staff and actually trying to understand where the frustrations are or where the inefficiencies are um, to increase the amount of time that they have um, on the front line with patients. So arguably the most important thing is just go for it. People think that demand and capacity modelling in the community is really complex, but we've shown with this programme that it's not. It's really simple, it can be owned, led by the teams, and makes a real difference to patients and staff.